Welcome back everyone, today we are going to level up our PCG game and by the end of this video we will have a beautiful island scene just like this. This is the second part of my Unreal Engine 5.2 PCG series and if you haven't seen the first one I recommend you to do that first because there I talked about some concepts that I won't talk about here anymore. Again, this is not a step by step tutorial, I want to inspire you to go crazy with these systems Personally, I think YouTube is already flooded with tutorials that are limited to the basics, so I want to limit my videos to advanced techniques. But still feel free to ask any questions, because of this format I might forget mentioning some details that are required for this whole process. Also I will upload my project files, so you can always check in there. In this first example I want to have bush patches that spawn randomly on the landscape. For that I have a simple setup with a PCG volume and a main graph assigned to it. I have a sparse surface sampler and a subgraph for an individual patch. I start out with a dense surface sampler and calculate the distance to our input point set. You can see that the density has changed around the points of our first sampler. Then I added some noise and filtering and spawned in the actual bushes. Then I created a bush patch blueprint with properties for the radius and density. Also I have a PCG component with the same graph that I used earlier. I used the property to param data node to read out the density and the radius from the blueprint. Back in the main graph, instead of executing a subgraph, I use the spawn actor node and have their PCG component execute their own graph. And as you can see, they both lead to the same result. Then I open the profiler by selecting a debug object and going to Window Profiling. And I found out that there isn't a meaningful difference in execution time between these two approaches, but since this is a very simple example, don't take my word for it and you should always profile for yourself. In the next part I want to create this island completely procedural, so this also includes terraforming the landscape. I started by creating a blueprint that generates a spline for the basic shape of the island. I added parameters to control the spline generation process. This radius controls the overall size, this roundness controls the degree of randomness and the subdivision is the amount of spline points that will be generated. To shape the landscape I am using the Landmass plugin, which provides a non-destructive way of editing the landscape. So first let's go into landscape mode and make sure that the plugin is enabled. From the sculpt menu I can add so-called blueprint brushes to the scene. Right now I am using the custom brush landmass, which will form the terrain according to a spline. If you are interested in all the things that you can change in here, I'll leave you a link in the description. Sadly I couldn't figure out how to create these blueprint brushes outside of landscape mode, which would have made things a lot more easier. So instead I created my own blueprint brush that will combine all of the islands in the scene. I made a copy of the landmass brush and started customizing it from there. The main part of a blueprint brush is its render function, where it gets a texture of the current height map as an input and returns the combined result as an output. I searched for logic related to splines and replaced it with the splines of all of my islands. Now that the terrain is working, let's add some assets. I added a PCG component to my island and also created a new graph, where I spawned in multiple layers of assets for different height levels. Now I can just drag and drop this blueprint into the scene and get a fresh island. As you can see, my blueprint brush still isn't perfect because itself needs to receive an update before I can register new islands for terraforming. But wait a second, now we have a better way to create actors. So now I added a PCG component to the water plane and generated points where I want my islands to spawn. 
on the spawn actor node, we now have the option to override actor properties. So in here I selected the property radius to control by an attribute of the name radius. I set this multiply node to write its output to an attribute called radius. And for the input source I set it to use the density for the calculation. As a result I have procedural deterministic islands with different shapes and sizes. Then I re-enabled the asset spawning and now my scene is complete. I hope you enjoyed this video, please leave a like if you did. Also you can share your ideas if you want me to build your idea in the future. For my next project I plan to use this PCG system to create complex buildings and structures. So if you want to see how this turns out, consider subscribing and enabling notifications. See you in the next one.